Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com. And today we're gonna to keep talking about breaking down complex studies. And if you remember from the previous video, we started with this very complicated photo, which we modified a little bit, and then we did a line drawing. So now that we've got the line drawing, we're ready to start painting the street scene. But first let's refer back to those three original goals. We wanna capture the essence, we wanna tell a clear story, and we wanna learn repeatable lessons. We're not just copying. So let's start with capturing the essence. The best advice I can offer here is if you can limit your color palette, this whole thing is gonna be easier. Because it's really easy to look at a scene like this one and just see tons of colors. But for the sake of our painting, let's just pick a few essential ones. And I'm not afraid to use the color picker for this. The real challenge here is actually the limitations. So don't worry about cheating. But picking a small set of colors and a few sort of lighter and darker versions of each is gonna make this painting a much more manageable challenge. All right, the next goal is telling a clear story. And here's where we're really gonna start taking control and changing things. Because clarity often comes through contrast. And if we had two buildings of the exact same color right next to each other, they become hard to separate, as in they visually merge into a single object. Now, if we change the color of one of them, then all of a sudden they become visually distinct. Once we put a few more shapes into the image, it gets even more complicated. Now we have a puzzle. If we can change the colors of each of these shape elements, eventually they all become visually distinct. And that happens because they don't share borders with any like colors. So this principle allows us to take a visually confusing source material, like our reference, to modify a few things, and it sort of forces structure onto it. So we're sort of giving up some of the real world accuracy, but the reward we get is much more clarity. It becomes easier to tell each shape apart from the ones next to it. So I've got my colors pre-mixed and it's time to start blocking in this image. So I'm gonna be using the photo as a guide, but remember my mind is trying to work it like a puzzle. So just like that diagram example, I'm altering the colors as I go in order to sort of force this visual separation. And moreover, I'm really straying from the photo in order to simplify areas that seem overly cluttered. Remember, I'm trying to capture the essence of the scene, not perfectly reproduce every roof and window. And it's hard. Frankly, this right here that we're doing now is the meat of the study. This block-in phase is where I have to do all the problem solving. It looks like I'm using big brush strokes and sort of moving quickly, but really, this is the tricky part. If you really think about it, copying every tiny detail exactly might be easier, because at least for that you have a roadmap, even if it is extremely boring. But what I'm doing here is more mentally active. I'm making a string of artistic choices, all of which are aimed at clarifying big ideas and sort of eliminating smaller details that are just confusing the scene. Now, if you've watched a number of these control paint videos, it should not be news to you that I'm starting with big areas first and then working my way into small details later. That's just a reasonable way to paint. And especially when you're doing sort of problem solving, puzzling different colors next to each other, it's a lot easier if you get the big areas to work first and then add the small windows and little details later. Now, once I've done all the major block in, I decide I want the background to be a little bit less contrast. Because remember, we're trying to make it more clear. We're trying to tell a clear story. And one way to do that is to force atmospheric perspective. Now the photo doesn't really have any depth to it, but our painting can. So here what I'm doing is I'm lowering the contrast of the buildings in the background, the ones that are further away from the viewer. And what that does is it sort of enhances a sense of depth. Now, once I've done all these final tweaks, I'm happy to call this block in finished. In the next video, we're gonna finish this study by doing the polish and details, so stay tuned for that. But if you're following along, I encourage you to get to this point. See if you can get that block in to be more clear than your original photo, and to try and make a pleasing composition out of something that's more chaotic. It's tough, but it's a good challenge. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.